Hello, it's Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. This is a part two podcast. And our guest today is George Geary. So you might want to go back and listen to the first podcast in case you haven't when you find this one, because it'll give you all the lowdown on George's career. And I'll tell you why that's fascinating. And there's lots of tips in there for people. I think it shows longevity. And and I don't think that even though we are women beyond a certain age, I don't think it means you can't have a new career. I just think you have to know something about it before you get into it. So here's what we're talking to George about today. His latest, is this the latest, George? Hello and welcome. Thank you. What? Which book? Made in California. Is that the latest? Oh, that's old. <laughs> 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 no, that in fact, uh, Made in California Part Two comes out in oh, that's right uh, in March, but I have LA Landmark Restaurants came out. Oh, see, I haven't seen. Oh, yes, I did see that book. It had Philippe's on the front cover. Yeah, yeah. I have not studied yep. that book. Yeah, Felipe's. In fact, uh, if you're from Southern California, the big thing is, do you believe Felipe's or Cole's sandwiches were the oh, first? Cool. And I don't answer it. I just say, who's on the cover of my book? There you go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, we are talking about ma Made in California. And let me say, the California-born burger joints. Bur we have to do that again. Let me introduce George's book properly. Cindy will edit that out, George, not to worry. Not only was I burping, but I was <laughs> mispronouncing don't you love a pro? Okay, here we are. Made in California. George's book. I love this book, George. The California Born Burger Joints, Diners, Fast Food, and Restaurants That Changed America. I love it because I was, you know, I've been, I lived half my life in Northern California and half my life in Southern California. So I'm used to I don't know anything else but California. I can be honest about that. When people ask me stuff, I go, I don't know. I'm from California. But I love this book, and I should probably read out to people. The, your Here's the table of contents. And then I want you to tell us how you had this idea. Okay. George talks about, in this book, A&W Root Beer, C's Candies, Sonora Cafe, The Brown Derby, Orange Julius, which was always good. Clifton's Cafeteria. Hinky Dinks, which I did not know turned into Trader Vicks. Okay, I did not know that before I read your book. Lowry's Pink Hot Dogs. McDonald's Barbecue. Um, it just goes on and on and on. In and Out. I know Swenson's Ice Cream. I mean, these are the Winchell's Donuts. Jack in the Box. This is my childhood. <laughs> I I grew up in the booming metropolis of San Rafael, California, on the opposite side of the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And let me tell you something. When A&W opened in my little town, the only other drive-in that was there was Foster's Freeze. And we were now a two-drive-in town. Okay? No flies on us. No. So, George, how did this book, how did this idea come to you? Well, you and I being in the food industry, people look at you if you talk about a fast food place, kind of like, oh, you know, know. know. they talk down to you. And come on, <laughs> it's the only thing open after we've taught a gourmet class at 1030 at night. <laughs> we have to go through the drive through and uh, get some French fries or something. In fact, um, I don't know if you remember that. IACP meeting that we had in uh, Philadelphia at the train station when none of the food came out. I was horrible, George. And I was in a group and we went over to the McDonald's with Julia Child and ate French fries. That's right. That was all they could, you know, it was, it was horrible. What year that was probably 1990. I don't know. But all uh, I remember is when the food was not coming out, it was a mess. The location, they didn't know what they were doing. I, yeah. I mean, I don't 
claiming the location was in, it was in a train station wasn't it part train station yeah we all j jumped on the train to go one stop oh, yeah. to the downtown from our hotel the concept was great but yeah the, the, how it happened and we waited a good two hours before any food and i don't think they had any food in the building <laughs> The problem was, George, management did not obviously take a location check-in when they took that gig. Right, they, they and then I remember up. Julia getting up and saying, I'm yeah. going to Burger King. Yeah. A bunch of us stood up and went over there because I was at the next table with her. But um, So then I, I realized fast food was okay. Yeah. I was hungry. But yeah. the worst part at IACP, and not just IACP, I've had this in uh, many other organizations, if they're not really a caterer, you know what I mean? Uh, they don't know how to put the event together. But the other reason is, is if there's no food, stop serving wine. <laughs> oh, that is, yeah, that, that's, that, that's a good tip for a dinner party too. <laughs> because if you forgot, if something burns, stop serving wine. Because stop serving booze, because booze when people are hungry and mean doesn't make them nicer. That's no. all. No, they don't go to sleep, most of them. But uh, but back to this book. Um, so I realized this is my first book uh, that I did without any recipes at all. Okay. So there's no recipes, and uh, so I can't I can't teach a class on it. But I've done I, a lot of talks throughout I, the country. You don't need recipes. I yeah. love this. Has no recipes. Well, the information have, is more than enough. I had one publisher. That, uh, well, the one that had done restaurant books, he said he wanted to do this book, but he needed recipes. And I thought, OK, how in the world do I get McDonald's to give me a recipe for their Big Mac? I'm not going to do it. So it yeah. this is not a book. So what happened was is how this started is I was in Wilmington, California. Now, that is a hot spot. <laughs> oh, stop name dropping, George. <laughs> I'm going um uh going down the um oh, what do you call it uh pch and there's a uh derwiner schnitzel or wiener schnitzel derwiner wiener schnitzel, yeah wiener schnitzel they call it now and i saw these plaques and i told you in the last uh time we talked the plaques i love to read and all these plaques said that it was the original one well it didn't look like a roof top that i'm used to you know that you drive through yeah. it yeah. looked like just a regular building and i thought well this can't be the first so i got out of the car i didn't even go through the drive through and i'm reading this and i'm going it is the very first place he opened in 1961 so in my mind i thought there's got to be more that started here i wonder if i can come up with 50 because once in a while you get all these places, they say, oh, this, and I knew In-N-Out had started here. I knew McDonald's had started here, but I didn't know the exact locations at the time. So it was things like that, that I thought, I wonder if I can get at least 50. Well, I got a hundred. Wow. Type of look. Now some, yes, you mentioned, I mentioned, or you mentioned Pink's hot dogs. Um, I put that in because I didn't realize that they were coast to coast. Um, they're in a lot of amusement parks. Uh, Got it. Flags locations have pinks. Um, mm -hmm. We know of it over there on La Brea with the big line, and we think there's only one. Then I, I really want to highlight little places like um, Cupid's Hot Dogs that are out in the valley. They only have three or four locations. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I kind of did as I started highlighting these places, looking through a list. And I teach it uh, over in uh, West Lafayette, Indiana, Purdue University, a couple of times a year. And I, I go up the highway, exit 172, and they don't do it here that they do in California. But back east, they'll have a list on gas stations, lodging, and food. Well, I drive through 172, and I see about 14 places listed for food are coming up. And in my, I'm clicking them all off. Out of 14, 12 were California raised. Wow. So I thought if West Lafayette, Indiana has 12 California born places, a book can be done. Yes. So that's how it started. And I started looking into, it was families that started these places mostly. Um, two men, A&W, 
uh, started that in Lodi, California, of all places. Wow. And I started going to the locations to see what was there. And in Lodi, it's now a dog groomer of the location. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. And they have a little plaque in the cement that says this is the very first location. But in Lodi, there is a, an a and And I went there on a Tuesday night and I ordered, as you said, you had an A&W. So you remember Mama Burger, Papa Burger, and Baby Burger. Baby Burger! Yeah. So I said, I'll take a, a, a Papa Burger. And I'll, he goes, okay, that'll be two Papa Burgers. I said, no, I want one Papa Burger, one French fry. No, that's two. I said, I only want one. He goes, it's buy one, get one free Tuesday. Oh, how I fun. said, but I don't want to. He goes, well, I have to charge you for two. I said, well, then I'll just take one and you have one for lunch. I'm not allowed to eat after. You know, said, so this kid can't realize that I only want one hamburger. So, <laughs> but what was going on when I was writing that book? Every chapter, I'd get hungry for that food. I, of course you would. Now, it made me... In the last podcast that George and I just recorded, George, I know when some of these beautiful old buildings, you know, have been torn down, which is, yes. you know, mm -hmm. it's yeah. horrible. But when I started, and, and it's horrible, and it's the, it seems to be, unfortunately, just the way of the, you know, the world. But I, what made me sad in this book was I, I see, I still miss Kate Mantellini's, which was the oh, upscale yeah. of the Hamburger Hamlet. Hamburger well, Ham I look at, and I miss Hamburger Hamlet. And when I first moved to LA in 85, I probably ate in ha Hamburger Hamlet more. That's the places people went to. Do you know what I mean? And I oh. would, if I had a date, they'd say, well, I'll take you to Hamburger Hamlet. So, and I love Kate Mantellini's, but I saw so many places in your book that I thought, God, I used to love to go there. You took me to Kate's once on Wilshire. Yeah. yeah. God, I'm a good friend. I, um, I love Kate Mantellini's. I and pay. Cindy, no, I'm just kidding. I don't remember. <laughs> Cindy, I took many times to Kate Mantellini's because it was so close to my house. And it was always good food. You knew what yeah. you were going to get. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what all people are looking for. Now, I think one of the funniest ones, all of these Van de Camps and uh, the other thing, look what in and out has been able to create. That people come to Cal when they're in California, they post on Facebook the picture of they said, I've never eaten one. I've always wanted to have one of these at an in and out burger. Uh-huh. I look at in and out of all the companies um as the prime. Business, because you look at um like uh Derwiner Sitzel. I'm gonna keep yeah. calling it Derwiner Sitzel because that was their original name. Uh, <laughs> they started doing hamburgers, and then they started doing same thing with McDonald's. Then I recently they started doing tamales, and they're <gasps> they've got um. Oh, something else that's very strange over there. I forget what it is. But I'm like, stick with what you know. I know. I uh, know. I, okay, you and I, if we went to McDonald's today, we know they have a Big Mac. We know they have a hamburger. Do they have the rib sandwich now or not? What kind of chicken sandwich do they have? The, yeah. You, and no, none of it is good. <laughs> Here's the thing. It really isn't. I have to tell you, it cracks me up because when we started this and you were saying that people are food snobs. Now, here's my thing. I haven't eaten a lot of fast food in my life, George. I mean, seriously, as a child, this is so silly. My father owned grocery stores and was the butcher, the meat section. In yeah. the olden days, before it got big, Foster's Freeze, local place, bought their meat from my father's market. Okay, mm -hmm. so he ground hamburger for Foster's Freeze. So we used to be able to eat there because we knew what it was. To see right. My, my yeah. mother was one of those. My mother was one of those. And, but then A&W came in and I fell in love with the baby burger because I was a size, you know, four teenage girl who was always watching what she was eating. But when you say that, I don't eat at McDonald's. I never have, except you give me an egg McMuffin 
and those hash browns, that's like the Ritz to me. I love an egg McMuffin. I also love the bacon uh, biscuit, the bacon egg biscuit. Oh. When Cindy and I had worked all night long, <laughs> that light media tour and we were driving home back to the studio to unload the car our big treat was going to mcdonald's to get egg mcmuffins or a biscuit mcmuffin and yeah. have, and their coffee's not bad and i do know that but, i mean it's certainly not pete's but their coffee's not bad because actually i did some work with mcdonald's a few the, a decade ago when they first tried to up their coffee. Do you know what I mean? Instead of dirty water, they were going to make it darker dirty water, but it's pretty tasty. So mm -hmm. I know what you mean, but I mean, th what are you going to, there's times that you're going to eat. I remember when Jack in the Box came out, I ate, of course, this was always the middle of the morning and I had too much to drink, but I could get through the drive through and have their tacos. Oh, Jack and I had the tacos on Saturday night. I did. I uh, we took. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I'm jealous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and now there you get two tacos for a dollar. See this. They have this special right now. But um, as far as I didn't know what fast food was until about sixth grade. I and understand. We had a McDonald's. Mom cooked. Yeah, the, but, um, honey. Exactly. It was a different world. My. Father owned grocery stores, as I said, and my mother was a stay-at-home mom. So that's mm -hmm. what her job was. Do you know what I mean? And if we could go to someplace, in high school, I found the a and Baby Burger. But the first time I ever went to a fast food was, I'm sure, with a boyfriend. Do you see what I'm saying? It wasn't my family. We didn't, my family didn't go to those places. So, but. You mentioned uh, Foster's Freeze. And oh, God, I love Foster's Freeze. look at my, um my i think i have it yeah my dedication in maiden california is to my dad because he yeah. to have to eat an ice cream cone at foster's freeze we went to the original uh, well they dip those fancy cones in the chocolate yeah, the chocolate, yeah. We, the original uh, location is still there my mom and i went recently on la brea on no it's not la brea it's uh hawthorne boulevard in inglewood Yes. And when I was a kid, my dad, like I said, in the last uh, time we talked, was a CPA. And all of his clients were in Inglewood area because that's where his first office was. And so we would drive. My dad didn't do the freeway. He liked the streets. So we'd go oh. Hawthorne Boulevard all the way up north. And on the way home, we would pass two Foster's Freeze, the Hawthorne location, which the Beach Boys hung out there and they wrote a lot of music while they sat there and then the other one would be the Inglewood location and if we and I I was taught not to ask for things I wasn't a kid that would say yeah. can I have candy you know or anything I just <laughs> but I would look out the window with my eyes like while we're going past thinking okay am I gonna get a Foster's freeze or not I would never ask so by the time we got to the second location he would say oh do you got do you want ice cream oh i guess so so of course i'd get the the ice cream and he taught me how to stand over almost a trash can but bend your body over those ice creams when it would be over 70 degrees it would start melting in two seconds that chocolate coating oh so, that makes me freeze. cry george because oh. i I was hoping I would have won the billion dollars at the lottery these past couple of times because I would take some of it and buy that original Foster's Freeze I, and put it back to the original look. Because you know what? To go I back still, to the original. You know that the original look at McDonald's, remember it had, didn't it have a little guy speedy on it? That yes, was the, and the only there's only one location that looks like that still, and that's in Downey, California. Yeah. The first time I ever went to a McDonald's again, now this is, I'm in high school and we, I'm a song leader. 1930 what? I, I'm in high school. 1930 so. what? <laughs> I was in high school and I was a cheerleader and the, my best friend Nancy and our two boyfriends, but they weren't boyfriends, they were just friends. And the four of us would travel to these games, you know what I mean? And yeah. one of, they both had cars. 
And we went, one of them took us to a McDonald's. And I remember looking up and it said like milkshakes, 19 cents. And I thought, what? Yeah. I thought, what kind of sorcery is this that you can serve a milkshake for? <laughs> Even back I, this, yeah. Once in a while, I break down and have a strawberry milkshake from McDonald's and it's just filled with sugar and stuff and it tastes so delicious and i don't even know if a strawberry's ever crossed the um the line but i don't care no the 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 shakes to have are in and out oh no they're good i agree oh, yeah. the, those those are like it, it, they're going up and what's terrible is you know when you eat something and you've got only like two bites left and in your mind you're thinking, okay, I got two bites left. I'm mentally aware that I will not have any more. But with that shake it in and out is you forgot to do that mentally preparedness and you finished it and you're like, damn, I didn't get to, you know, think I, I had a few <laughs> slurps left. So you order the extra large and don't oh. ask the calories. That's a oh. secret menu item. And it is really large. And it, it's a meal and a half. Yeah. All I know is this. Cindy and I, some of the, we ate made, Cindy made lunch almost every day that we were together for 20 something years. But when we didn't want to, we were tired. We cooked a lot. We'd go to in and out mm -hmm. And not bad. That's all I can say. Not bad. Yeah, I, I, I don't eat there a lot, but I I've had their strawberry milkshake and it was delicious. Uh huh. They they um in and out is uh, uh they've kept the menu very very simple. Everything yeah. they do is really good. Uh, it's a love hate relationship with French fries. Some people don't like them; they think they're too blah. But if you get them well done or medium well, they're pretty good. They're better. And I, for the first time, I did animal fries. I'd never done that before. So now their original location is if it, the 10 freeway took it out. So they oh. put a replica next to the 10 freeway. Oh. And across the street from there is Burger University, a lot of their warehouses and things like that. Oh. And just recently, I did an interview with uh, the Wall Street Journal and New York Times on that company uh, because they're expanding to the East Coast. They're putting together wow. offices going in at uh, Franklin, Tennessee, the same place that Carl's Jr. moved to. Wow. So they're, uh, they're expanding because they would not open up a location unless their trucks can get there in a day. Get it. By Las Vegas was able to get there and northern california they put some stuff up there so they have a lot of growth they're going to do and they're keeping it in the family and there's one woman that owns it the granddaughter and in fact her new book comes out the ins and outs of in and out comes How out come out next month i guess it is so well, you know to read oh, that sounds fantastic you know george i know i've told you this before but in and out had the tragedy what 30 or 40 years ago when the vice president and his son yeah. were killed in a plane crash yeah. mm -hmm. i didn't know how to handle that in my book so uh, you I know no and no one wants to because i ended up being friends with the widow mm -hmm. and the daughter so the daughter had lost her father and her brother do you know what i mean yeah, so there was so much tragedy in the family. So much tragedy. And yet they persevered. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. persevered. Because there's a lot in the book, um, uh, in that chapter. You look at every com uh, company in my book, there's 50, 60 companies. I can't go into so much detail. Oh, oh no. But because I, I could write a full book on each place. That's right. And so, no one needs to know that. I just said that to you because it was, I, so, it was shocking. I, Oh, it was because it was here in Orange County or not far from here. And what I had to do is I had to think of the reader. You'd walk into a Barnes and Noble, you open a book and you go, hey, I know about in and out I'm going to read that chapter because it's only like four or five pages. Yeah. You're reading it and I don't mention the, the death. And I thought, <laughs> okay, now what's going to happen here? So 
on their website, all they do is say they passed away that year. Nothing else. Got it. So I went to their media department and I said, I feel I need to address it, but I want to make sure I address it like you would do it. Yes. So I gave them the chapter afterwards. And I said, I'm fine with you editing and how you feel I should do this. And they came back with, you did better than we could have. Oh. So well, I'm fine with that. Absolutely. And I don't go into dirt. I don't go into the granddaughter of how many times she's been married. I don't go. <laughs> I'm sure she will in her book. I don't go into um, some of the founder's kids being in rehab. I don't do any of that stuff because well, you, it's not part of the story. No, but family businesses, family businesses are going to have family dynamics. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That, yeah. And it's all a part of life. But right. certainly, now, the last one I want to talk about, which to me is like, talk about the success story, is C's Chocolates. Oh, I'm glad you put that. Uh, uh, now, we didn't talk about what we were talking about. I'm no, so glad because I in to surprise you. A surprise. The cover of that of that book, Made in California, mentions fast food, and C's Candy isn't one of them. No. C's Candy should not be in that book. Oh, but you don't know? Okay. Because if you look at the subtitle, it doesn't say candy stores, you know? I understand. And so I looked at that and I thought, I, and I talked to my publisher and I said, uh, she's candy's part of it, but it's not part of that title. And and they said, it's your book. You write what you want, which I really like that publisher instead of the yeah. other way around. It's normally with the publishers. So what I did is I, I found where C's Candy had started. And it was on Western Avenue in uh, Los Angeles, not far from El Cholo, is yes. a Mexican restaurant that I talk about. And um, so what I did is I, one day I went by there. And if you go to C's Candy, sometimes you'll see pictures of a little motorcycle and the store and all the windows, four windows. And that's the building that's on Western that they what? opened uh, two, 102 years ago and that was their first kitchen and I thought well this is really fascinating so I looked at it and um, there was no like plaque and I've when you work with these big companies to talk about their story they don't know their story I, I'm they sure have, that they have publicity departments that don't know the story or the history yeah they're just out there to sell the product, not to talk about the product from yesterday. So I was in Norco, California, and they were having a C's candy opening and they had the motorcycle there and they had the CEO was there and they were giving free chocolate away. And it, I mean, there were hundreds of people and I, uh, walked over to the and I hadn't finished the book yet I was in the middle of writing it and this was February of 2020 so we're gonna go into COVID in one month and we don't know it yet <laughs> so I talked to the CEO uh, Pat Ingen and um and if those of you that don't know um it's part of the Warren Buffett or um conglomerate of uh, foods and everything else so I went up to him and I said, you know, I'm writing this book and uh, uh, your original store is still there, the building, but it doesn't have a plaque. Oh, yeah. And he said, it's still there? He didn't even know it was still there. I said, yeah. He goes, here's my business card. Can you send me some information? So I send him information. And in the meantime, I have to teach up in San Francisco area and they have a, offices in South San Francisco. And I told him, I said, well, I'm going to be up in your area in a couple of weeks. He said, well, let's get together for breakfast. So we went to get to, for breakfast. And I thought it was interesting. His company credit card was um, Southwest Airline uh, American Express or, you know, <laughs> which I just thought was fascinating. That it wasn't a C's candy credit card. And so, um, and he paid, which, you know, I, I thought that was nice because, um, Absolutely. yeah. And he didn't bring me any candy though, but that wasn't nice. But my goal was to get into the factory. That was the goal, but it still hasn't worked, but we're still talking all the time. So anyway, we got together and he said he was surprised that their media department didn't know 
all the history. And I said, well, your media department is the same company that uh, Denny's uses. Oh, that um, uh, Taco Bell uses. I mean, there was like four of them. And he said, wow, I didn't realize that. He said, do you think we should move this in-house? And I said, yes. And you guys need to learn your history. So he moved it in-house. And I took on, during COVID, the job of getting a plaque on that building. Oh, how fabulous, George. And I wanted to do it before their 100th anniversary that year. Yeah. And I did. I, I worked with the city. We got a plaque out there. What's funny is he went himself before this to see the building, and it was a coffee house, Tom and Tom Coffee, which was Korean coffee. And mm -hmm. he says to the gal working there, he says, I understand this was a candy store. And she goes, oh, I don't know. He goes, yeah, it was C's Candy. Have you heard of that? And the girl goes, no. So right then he knew he needed to do some yeah. media. So another gal, a little older, comes over and goes, is that the candy with the old lady on the box? Sure enough, Mary sees that's what it was. So uh, um, since then, it's now a pastry place. Uh, but I thought for their hundredth, I if it was my company, I would have bought the building and made it like a little museum for C's Candy because they have so much history, that company. I and, couldn't agree you more. But it's not <laughs> the best area of yeah. LA. But. I know. It, it, you know, but I think if you put some nice things here and there, maybe uh, the area will get nicer. I agree. You can try to uplift it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, all I know is in my little shopping center that I go to the most where there's a Ralph's and a Ross and the normal sort of stuff. There is a space that becomes a C's chocolate pop up three or oh, four times, pop up. Mm -hmm. three or four times a year. And I love it. Yeah, my my favorite. I know so much about the company, and um, in fact, the C's Candy is three doors down from the Starbucks that I sit and write at sometimes. Oh, okay. And if you see in that book, I've got a picture of a C's Candy girl, and that's my C's Candy girl, and she'll walk in. Hey, George, how are you? And <laughs> one time, this guy looks at me and goes, "The C's Candy lady knows your name. That's kind of scary." I said, "Yeah, it is," and. I go in there and we play a game, the sample, you know, that they give you yeah. gives me a sample and I have to guess what it is. So I pop it in my mouth and I, I tell her what flavor it is. And then uh, the other thing I went to see candy in Brea, California one day and they have a motto, but uh, the girl goes, you want a sample? And I said, excuse me, where's the three S's? Thank you. It's service samples and smile. And she said, you got two of the three. Okay, I'll give you a sample. And I thought, okay, I really do like you. You're having a rough day, but who could that? But you would think, again, you, you work in great food. Like I, I talked about pastry. What's negative? You stand there at Seas Candy and people are in bad moods sometimes, even after their chocolate. And you want to smack them. You're like, why what? are you in a bad mood? She just me... gave you a nut griddle and you're in a bad mood. Okay, let me tell you something. That's wrong, George. Oh, my If God. you get in a good mood when you go into a C's chocolate shop, there's something wrong with you. Uh -oh. Well, honey, I cannot thank you enough. I want to say, and we'll look forward to your books that are coming, Made in California. This is such a great resource. I think that it's just absolutely, it's a resource and it's fun, especially if you're on vacation in California and you could, you have that chance to go to these places if you've never gone. And you have post-it notes all in there. I, I told you. I <laughs> I, honey, I put post-it notes. All my cookbooks and get post-it notes. I It's something to come back to. Or sometimes I've written on it that asks me the question that I have to ask someone. Or sometimes I need to check it out again. Now, if anyone has questions for George or me, when we broadcast the podcast, Cindy puts all George's information up there so you can reach out to George. Then you can reach out to me at womanbeyond at icloud.com. We have found out sometimes that people are shy and they don't want to ask in a, on our Facebook page. So they text me and then I answer their questions privately. 
that isn't something that we're good at being shy, George. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I don't I, think so. When I said that word, I noticed your eyes rolled. What? Their head. <laughs> huh? What? Honey, thank you so much again for your time. I know how valuable it is and I appreciate it. And uh, you'll come back again when you do um, have a new book out. You got it. Okay, honey. Thank you so much. And thanks, Cindy, who keeps the train on the tracks. Um, I've tried to come up with other analogies with Cindy, and then she didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sticking with train on the tracks. So thank you, Miss Cindy. Thank you, George. And thank you for all of you that listen and write us notes. We totally appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye.